So a list is a fairly simple way to replicate geometry and generative components. But what if you had many values to add? Or you wanted to easily change the interval between the values, for instance. In that case, you would want to consider using a function. So there's many functions available in GC. The one we're going to take a look at here is the series function. So the series function will generate a list of values based on a defined start value, an end value, and a regular increment. So let's go back and edit these nodes and take a look at how we could input the information differently with the series function. So I'm going to double click on point NW01 and instead of typing in this list, I'm going to come over here to that square that's to the left of the field, click on that and that opens up what's called the script editor. Just gives you a little larger box to work in when you're typing into the field. It also has a little tool here which is called the expression builder. I'm going to select that and that opens up a list of functions that are available in GC. You can see there's, there's a number of them and there's a, a description or a purpose written next to each one. But we're going to scroll down and find the series function. So you can see it creates a list from a given start number, final number, and increment. So I'm going to select that and I can select insert and then it puts the correct syntax in my script editor. So it's going to say series, it has a parentheses, we're going to put in a start value. So if I wanted the same start value, I could put in 20. We're going to put in a limit. So if I want the same list, I'd make the limit 60. And my increment was 10. And I'll select OK. We can close this. And that basically generates the same list of points. But now we're going to take it a st step further. What if we added a slider to control the increment and the, the limit, the last value? Well, we actually already have a slider for that value. That would be our, our Z height. But the increment, we could generate a slider for. Basically, the increment's your floor to floor height. So I'm going to go back to my node types, scroll down to the utility nodes, and place a slider node on my graph. So I'm going to call the first slider node Z lobby height. So this will be the height of the lobby floor. In other words, it's that start point of our series because it's where the guest room floors will start. So I'm going to make the minimum value there 9 feet. I'm going to make the maximum 25. I'm going to put in a default value of 20. I'll do my resolution at 1. And we'll snap to the ticks. And then I'm going to copy that node and paste it on my graph. And this one we're going to call Z guest room height or GR. And we can use all the same properties on there. So now we've got two sliders we can use in our series function. So I'm going to go back to my first point node where I typed in that series. Again, I'm going to open the script editor and I'm going to replace these hard-coded values with my variables. Now in this case, I can just start typing the variable I want. So our start point is going to be the Z lobby height. So I start typing that and you can see as I type different variables that come up here and I can just double click the one I want to use. And then our limit is going to be our just our Z height total building height and our increment will be the Z guest room height and we'll select OK. So you can see that spacing changed because my, my guest room height was at 20. If I move that slider down then it's going to change those points and it's going to add points as we get smaller because obviously the less floor to floor height we have the more floors we could get in that height. And then of course I want to do the same for all four corners, so I'm just going to select my entire series function there, control C to copy it, and we're just going to replace the list in each point with that. Then I'll go to my generative components taskbar, open the control panel. You can see now I've got more variables in the control panel. So not only can I change the length and width 
of the building. I can change the floor to floor height on the guest rooms. I can change the overall building height. As you can see, as I increase the building height, it keeps adding floors to the building. And I could increase the lobby height as well, which is going to bump up all the other floors as well because they're all related to each other. So that's how you can use a combination of a couple of variables or sliders and the series function to really increase the flexibility of your model. Now, what if you could apply that same functionality to the Acusim Building Designer Floor Manager? Then you'd have a really powerful tool.